Welcome back to Trojan Sports Now and welcome to our 2013 season of Trojan Sports and we'd like to welcome back our uh, athletic director, John Hartwell. John, thank you for being here. Sure, thanks for having me, Jonathan. And last time I had you on here, you were just a week or so into the job, not very far in, but now you've, uh, I believe, 100 days, I heard you say earlier, and uh, it's been quite a run so far. It has, uh, very busy, and it seems like just a couple of days, literally, because it's been so busy, right. but, uh, you know, very excited, uh, obviously, with, uh, with the turning over of the new year. You've got uh, men's and women's basketball who are full-fledged into their conference schedule now and certainly a plethora of spring sports. Uh, so the opportunity for our fans to come out basically every weekend from now until the middle of the May and uh, between baseball, softball, men's and women's basketball, uh, men's and women's tennis, men's and women's golf, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for folks to come see Trojan Athletics. And to keep you all busy as well, but I know something that, that we got to talk about last time was the opening of Trojan Arena. Well, it's open and, and both teams have got to play in it, and recently it was uh, dedicated as Court Maestri. Uh, just talk about the experience of the new arena and also the honor for Coach Maestri. Sure, the, the new arena has been outstanding, and really the reviews of teams coming in to see it for the first time has been outstanding. They said, wow, you know, this is this is really nice. This is as nice as any place we've ever been in. And, uh, you know, so that kind of feedback is, is certainly uh, encouraging. And uh, we, we've gotten the same reaction from fans who've, who've come in there. You know, many uh, came into some of the early games, obviously got to see the Mississippi State uh, right. opening night win and have come back since then. But some of the fans that you see come in the arena for the first time, you know, just kind of the, the <laughs> wow and looking around uh, to it, which, which is very nice. And, and certainly you talk about uh, last Thursday special night, the, the dedication of Court Maestri. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Don, uh, uh, when, when our Board of Trustees uh, made this official back in December and, and Don first heard about it, Don is probably one of the most humble guys right. you'll ever meet. And, and he said, oh, you know, y'all don't do this, don't do this. <laughs> said, no, you know, this, this ship has sailed. We, we are doing this to honor, you know, literally a, a career full of achievement. Fortunately for us here at Troy, uh, it, it's been mostly with us. But 31 years as the head coach and uh, certainly – uh, as, as successful as he has been on the basketball court, you look at what he's done for the young men that have come through his program off the court and how he conducts himself as a role model and, and what he's taught the, these young men. He is just a quality, quality person and, and certainly something that, that we're excited we were able to do. And, and obviously it was even nicer with a win the other night right, against exactly. Monroe, two, two in a row two now uh, on, on the men's side and you know on the women's side. Uh, Coach Rigby, uh, you can see that program getting better right. every day. It, it may not have equated to as many wins, or I know it hasn't equated right. to as many wins as she and her coaching staff would like, but you can see it coming. You can see the progression, and her enthusiasm and positive nature is infectious. You can't help but get excited being around her. So, uh, you know, certainly good things to come for both of our basketball programs. Right, there's been so many close calls for the women's basketball team. It's kind of heartbreaking uh, for them, but you can see that progress, as you said. And there's, there's a long way to go for both teams uh, the rest of the way. But also, as you said, there's a lot of other sports uh, playing this spring. There's uh, baseball, there's softball, uh, track, um, and also golf. Golf, and I believe uh, we just got something, some good news for the golf team. Sure, we, we just got a significant six-figure gift yesterday from a, a very generous donor of ours who ha has given other generous gifts in the past. But this particular gift is being earmarked towards our new golf practice facility, which will be on the, uh, the remaining site of, of what once was the nine-hole uh, university course, which lost several holes due to the construction of the new Trojan Arena, but that configuration is going to give us a practice facility that, that uh, is equal to any in the country, and our coach Matt Terry, uh, our golf coach for both the men's and women's team, very excited about it, and uh, we hope to get that process rolling here this spring so that uh, next fall those teams can enjoy that. It, it not only is going to consist of the practice area for the teams uh, to include a configuration, even though it's really only in the footprint of what is right now four holes of golf, but they can move the tee boxes around and configure it to where you can play a true nine holes. Wow. It'll have a short game area, sand area, you know, large putting greens with different undulations to give the the players any kind of look that they would get on a golf course and, and there will be a new building constructed too that will contain coaches offices uh, locker rooms uh, and probably the neatest thing these hitting bays that literally will have garage doors that open up 
uh, with swing analysis machines in there. You know, I need one of those that has the, that shock treatment and your <laughs> right. back swings tells you to slow down, but uh, uh, really exciting for our, our golf program. And a lot of people probably don't realize that the golf team uh, back in the day was one of the top in the country, a couple of national championships along the way. So this will put them as a bigger presence back on the campus. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in the Division Two days and, and Coach Griffin being here who went on to great success at Auburn, uh, a very storied history of this golf program. And a lot of those same golfers who have been successful here in the past have helped us with this project in terms of the fundraising, and it's, it's great to see it uh, coming to fruition. Well, great. And what other facilities? I know that's something you really wanted to work on when you got here. What other projects are you working on? Sure. We, we're in the fundraising phase right now for a couple of other, actually three other significant projects. One at our tennis facility to enclose uh, at least four and hopefully six of those courts uh, so that you can play in inclement weather and also be able to have matches, uh, you know, because when we host ma matches right now, if it rains, you're out of luck. You right. just have to wait out the rain. But if you had those indoor courts, you could continue the match uh, indoors. It, it will also in include some improvements to their uh, building there, mm -hmm. some locker rooms, coaches' offices. Uh, right next door to our tennis facility at softball, we've also got improvements planned there. New dugouts, we're actually going to sink both of the dugouts right. there to allow better line of sight for right. the fans up in the grandstands. Uh, on the, the home uh, dugout along the first baseline attached to the back of it will be a new locker room for our teams. And then adjacent right behind that where the current uh, pitchers and, and hitting area is, uh, those areas will be enclosed to be able to use in, in inclement weather as well. Uh, in addition to those two projects, uh, obviously the one that most people talk about is that north end zone project right. uh, that we've been working with the architects on here the last six weeks or so, doing some revised plans. I expect to get some more within the next 10 days. And, and obviously uh, that will house everyday activities of football to include coaches' offices, team meeting rooms, locker rooms. We're also looking at putting uh, a new academic center, new uh, strength and conditioning area and also a new training room in the facility as well as some of our administrative offices. So it's really going to be a crown jewel and as, as folks drive onto campus uh, from George Wallace going, uh, going towards campus, when you first come upon the football stadium, you'll be able to see kind of in the same architectural uh, design will be in that north end zone as is with the new Trojan wow. Arena too. So it's really going to uh, not only be the, the meat and potatoes uh, facility for us to improve, but also from a visual standpoint, be really attractive addition to campus. Can't wait to get a look at those and then you'll have to, to bring them and show them to us. Sure. Uh, but another thing, I know there's a lot of big weekends, as you mentioned, just every weekend from now on basically, uh, but there's some s specific ones you wanted to talk about. Uh, one in late April that you'd like to talk about. Sure, the weekend of April 19, 20, 21, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday there, uh, it is being dubbed as our um, uh, spring game weekend, mm -hmm. tea club weekend, and hall of fame weekend. So included in that weekend, uh, we're gonna have some special events for our tea club members to come back. Uh, we're going to have a golf outing on Friday for that. We've got baseball uh, Friday evening, which will have an event surrounding that. On Saturday will be a, a chalked full of activities day. Uh, starting, it looks like 11 a.m. will be the kickoff of our uh, uh, spring game right. and football to culminate the spring practice. We'll also have baseball that afternoon have a softball doubleheader that afternoon, oh, well. <laughs> and then culminating that evening, uh, I think it'll probably start around 6.30, the second class of the Troy University Athletics Hall of Fame induction, which uh, uh, that class will be announced a little later uh, in the spring, probably here in the next six weeks. So big weekend then, and then to, to wrap up the weekend on Sunday, we'll have baseball and softball Sunday. But we really wanted to do a weekend uh, that is really kind of a focal point uh, for the spring. Obviously in the fall a lot of people come to football weekends and take in right. other events. We wanted to make sure that we had a spring weekend that uh, literally was all encompassing. So uh, mark that on your calendars for our fans out there because it's really going to be an exciting weekend. And yeah, basically like a spring homecoming for all the fans who get to call, come to the football homecoming, make this one for all the spring sports. That'll be a great uh, event. Absolutely and we've talked to some of our current NFL guys and that 
that April time frame is really good for them too because obviously the season is over. Some of their mini camps uh, are, are over and it's before. I think it correlates with uh, the NFL draft right. weekend. So they, you know, they won't have any obligations that weekend. So we hope uh, several of those guys are able to make it back for the event. Well, that'd be great. I know there's something going on at the end of May with the softball team uh, hosting the conference tournament as well. Sure. It's actually graduation weekend here <laughs> in Troy. So it, another very big weekend. Uh, it'll be graduation. Our softball team is hosting the Sunbelt softball championships, mm. which will be very exciting. And I think there's also a, uh, a youth softball tournament in, uh, in Troy that weekend too. So if you hadn't, if you're planning on coming from out of town and you hadn't gotten hotel reservations, I'd advise getting them very quickly. Right, and, and even if you're just a, a casual softball fan, that'd be a great weekend to come out. I believe uh, Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette, was one of the teams that made it to the World Series recently. So they're just a great all-around uh, weekend for Sunbelt sports. A absolutely, and you talk about softball, uh, both softball and baseball. If you look at the league RPIs for the Sunbelt mm -hmm. in both of those sports, very high uh, in, in terms of total leagues, and, and our league has had great representation, right. uh, not only getting into NCAA postseason play, but a as you mentioned uh, with Lafayette softball team, advancing far into postseason play. And one other thing I'd like to talk about, I know we can't bring you here without talking a little bit about football, um, but I know the Sunbelt schedule, a lot is being said about that right now with um, FAU and Middle Tennessee looking to leave a little earlier. Um, talk about that, their, their leap to Conference USA and just what's going on with that right now. Sure, and uh, you, you're exactly right. I would say uh, over the course of the last six weeks, probably at least two hours a day of my time is spent involved either scheduling issues as they relate to conference affiliation. Uh, you know, I was on a, a conference call with uh, Carl Benson, our conference commissioner, at 7.30 this morning, so it, it is nonstop. But here's the latest uh, as I know it, and, and obviously Middle Tennessee and FAU, it's not a matter of if they're leaving our league, they are, they are leaving, right. it's when. Uh, they are jumping to Conference USA. Uh, all indications are that they will be out at the end of this uh, academic year, okay. so, so starting this summer. So what that leaves for the fall of 13 in terms of, in particular, football scheduling is we would have eight conference teams left, which would mean if you played everybody once, you have a seven-game Sunbelt schedule, right. which is uh, most folks out there know we have been playing an eight-game uh, conference schedule, which going forward beyond – you know, getting by this 2013 year, which is going to be an anomaly anyway, uh, our, our plan is to go back to an eight-game conference schedule. But all of a sudden, if we're playing that seven-game conference schedule, that leaves one open date that right. we have left to fill. We do have an opponent out there, a, uh, a current BCS institution, who is willing to play us uh, a home-and-home, home, which we're very excited right. about that uh, if it comes to fruition, which I think it will. Uh, the challenge of it is – is you know with only a a seven game conference schedule and eight members four teams are only going to have three home conference games we've already had the straw draw if you will for that we came up on the short yeah. end if you will so uh, there's a very high likelihood that we could only have five home games uh, this year we we've got uh, UAB out of conference right. We've got another, an FCS level or one old 1AA team that we have not announced yet. We'll be announcing that soon. Uh, and then probably three Sunbelt games. So for a five-game home schedule is, is more than likely what is going to happen. Uh, and having a seven-game road schedule this year, again, just one time. Uh, but, but the benefit is, is that the following year in 2014, uh, we will – go back to a regular, we'll have four Sunbelt games and then two others, uh, and, and one of those uh, in all likelihood being the return of a BCS school to Troy, which is, many people know, when, when Mississippi State came here this year, we had a great crowd, right. and, and, and this other opponent will draw a great crowd too. And uh, we, when we announce that institution, I think it's one that we can compete with very favorably. Uh, so I know our, our coaching staff is excited about it. But, yeah, this, this whole scheduling thing and conference realignment has been a true jigsaw puzzle. And I don't think all of the dominoes have finished <laughs> falling yet. But I will say for those out there, because I know there was a question, oh, you know, is the Sun Belt going to survive? 
Uh, I think based on our football play this year and kind of how the dominoes have right. fallen, and if you remember here a week or so ago, there was one of those dominoes that fell, Boise, who was going to the Big East, who now said, no, nah, we're going to go <laughs> back to the mind. Mountain West. So, right. um, But if you look at the competitive nature of our football uh, of the Sun Belt football as a whole for the year, we actually finished third out of five non-BCS or non-AQ qualifying right. conferences this year, which uh, you know was very impressive. Right. And uh, a bunch of teams that made it to bowl games as well, and that's always good. And I know uh, we could probably talk to you about this forever, but I think uh, bowl negotiations are going to come up soon. So just a lot going on, not just with Troy University, but the Sun Belt that you're having to deal with. This yeah, there, there really is. And one more note towards mm -hmm. next year's football scheduling. Again, we don't know the final opponents or dates yet, but it does look, as I was going through some things last night, it looks as if we are going to have seven opponents on our schedule next year who all participated in bowl games okay. after the 2012 season. So I, I know that's a strong schedule and a daunting task, but, but I know our football coaches are excited about it. And there are many of those teams that competed in bowls that uh, we, we feel very comfortable that we're going to have an opportunity to win. And, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, too, uh, you know, our, our recent change in football uh, with Coach Wayne Bolt right. coming on board. And, and we talked earlier about Coach Rigby and her energy with women's basketball. Wayne Bolt brings that same energy to our football right. team and to our defense in particular. And coach some of the best ever at Troy and DeMarcus Ware and O.C. Manura. So we're running out of time, but uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, we look forward to what the spring has to offer. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. And uh, to the fans out there, continue to support us. Uh, come to Trojan events. We've got plenty of them for you to come to this fall. Exactly right. So stay tuned for what's coming up this week in Troy Sports. Trojan Sports Now.